Rejected Stone Productions presents to one and all the Rejected Stone Podcast. Real talk about real issues in real time. Your host for this Rejected Stone experience, Dr. Zebulon Maleski and Dr. Jarvis Watson. To win day, let's begin. Right, all right. Yes, yes. Greetings, greetings. This is uh Rejected Stone Productions season three, mm-hmm. episode one, pushing back against adversity and greetings and welcome. Thank you for uh joining us and being with us again. All right. Yeah, it's a pleasure being back in the house. Um you might want to say who you are, uh brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's brother, true. Brother <laughs> hosts, it's been a, it's been a while. We got to get back and uh, get the rust off. Yeah, so we love. Yeah, it. that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Right. We can get it on it, Pop. That's true. Okay. Well, we got some. <laughs> we got some sound effects, as you could hear. Um, we're trying some new things, but uh, right. my name is uh, Zebulon Maletsky, and um, I'm here with my my partner, my uh, my colleague, my worthy constituent. Mm-hmm. And uh, brother, uh, Dr. Jarvis Watson, uh, let's give give him a hand. We welcome him, welcome, and welcome. Give me some blessings. Happy New Year. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you, brother. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, so, how you been? It's been uh, it's been oh, a, been a minute. Man, I can say I've been uh, blessed with nothing but activity and um, opportunities. I uh, started a new venture out last year. Uh, which has taken all my time as well as uh, traveling in where I am. So uh, definitely blessed to work in a new environment with a bunch of great creatives. Um, but it uh, has taken a toll on one <laughs> in regards to my attention, my, uh, my energy. Uh, but it's been reciprocated in so many different ways in regards to just working with some new colleagues, uh, some new leadership, but also with these wonderful students who are going to shape and mold this world in ways that you can't even imagine. So just blessed to be around them. But uh, right. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's been wonderful, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just glad I only had to use my shovel once or twice. I know we got some snow coming soon, but uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, it is what it is. So yeah. I'm liking this new, uh, this new uh, impact that we have. We have, uh, yeah. and, and also, you know, this is our third season and we're just really, really blessed and really glad to be able to offer this program again this year you know uh it, it's uh we're busy yeah uh and uh, like like you were just saying started new jobs and congratulations congratulations by the way on on getting that new position that's a, yeah. a real uh excellent uh fit and a real a real great place um that you're that you are working with uh now um, school of visual arts i believe yeah yeah, 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 and they're right in Manhattan, right? They're... Right, right. Um, twenty first and twenty third, and all over the place. Yeah, but a uh, great group of people. I uh, love to work with them, and I just want to say, uh, for the p- purposes of uh, what we're saying here, uh, the opinions and facts that I share are in no way connected to 
School of Visual Arts. Uh, it's definitely <laughs> part of Projected Stone Productions. <laughs> We're going to make sure to put that out there. But that's more because I have a lot of love for the people there. So major shout out to SBA. We, we, yeah we, we're here yeah no doubt no doubt yeah and um and and yeah you know we we uh we we all i think they're talking about you know th- th- this is the great resignation they're calling it. people are you know moving Man. jobs changing jobs getting new jobs right. in your case and uh uh or either staying with their current job in my case but uh yeah. but yeah a lot of people but what's what's going on with that you know that has a lot to do with I guess they say with COVID and with uh, some of the things that have been happening in the world, bring us up to speed, Jarvis. We have, it's been a long time and you are, are, you know, keep us in the know. Yeah. Yeah. The great, um, talking about adversity, uh, the main, the the major theme of this particular uh, recording uh, message and show today. Um, What I've been witnessing, and it's like I said, SVA is like where I work and in other places. uh, We a lot of people have been experiencing this desire to work from home, and uh, part of that is also realizing when you're at home, there are these other things that are happening where you, because of the hustle, you weren't able to get things done or attend to certain needs or things around the house that might need some some fixing or even just doing some errands that maybe you couldn't do because you were at a location that was far from where you needed to go. But now, you know, your lunch hour could be utilized in ways that you couldn't do that before. Um, the, right. for those, for those who are parents, uh, I think the ability to be around their ch- children and actually see them grow, um, in a different way, uh, there's that, that added. So I think that might be lending to like, what is, and what are the benefits of being around home, but also as you start to get older or go into different parts of your career or or experiences it's like what do i value more Mm. so i think that's kind of putting a uh little bit of a uh, different perspective on work and how much time you put into work and i don't want to say too much like i'm leaning one different way but i'm just saying some of the things i'm seeing as far as like what i'm hearing from different people yeah 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 no 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 doubt and and i think that's that's something we've been uh, uh, reading about and hearing about, mm-hmm. you know, people are looking for new things. Um, we've been through a lot as, as a community, as a society, and as a world. And I think it's only natural, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, to, to find that. And uh, it also seems to me that it, it's coming out in our politics. It's coming out in our national dialogue. Mm. Uh, we're seeing a, a more kind of uh, defiant uh, sort of, you know, kind of people standing in their own positions with any, with no ability, it seems, to to change, to change their minds. Or right. to, you know, it's just sort of like, I'm in this camp. And, and that's that seems to me that's really doing some damage uh, in our in our current climate. Uh, what are you, what are we, what have you been seeing uh, as you look at you know, just some of the, the politics, you know, not ju- not just nationally, but also locally. Um, yeah. Yeah. And one of the biggest things I, I see, and this is definitely um, developing a new definition of polarization um, <laughs> for those who are for and against wearing masks. And um, I, I love it for the aspect of you being able to um, exercise your rights to you know, choose what you want, vote for what you want, and live how you how you want. Um, the other part of that is, I'm just hoping that people can come to some type of agreement or some type of solution that incorporates a little bit of both. Okay, um, you may not want to wear the mask all the time, but maybe there's like, like some schools have like mask free hours. You know, so you can mm. you can go outside and breathe and things like that. But until we get this thing under control, I think we have to start considering um, different type of compromises in regards to um, making sure that we are exercising the, the the best practices to make sure that we can all breathe, we can all exist. Uh, this this virus goes down. Uh, to really understand how viruses work, mm. um, to do a little bit more research. But um, I can't tell a parent how to raise a child. 
And so I, I really am careful in regards to how I share my opinion about that, because, you know, you know, for those who are raising children, um, they have a different set of uh, experiences and expectations as well as um, responsibilities that I, I'm, I'm not privy to right now. Right. But um, I do want to figure out with all of the different adversities that are coming through with this mask and no mask, I'm not even get to the vaccine because that's, that's, that's way, <laughs> right. That's, I think that's way too controversial, but the aspect of wearing a mask and not wearing a mask, um, it, it 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 saddens me because I feel like this is uh, something that's going to start. With. Oh. oh, wait a minute! We got somebody calling in. We have a call. Oh. We have a caller. Yeah. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, uh, hello. You're live hello? on Rejected Stone Productions podcast. <laughs> okay. Can you hear? Can Can you hear? Welcome, us? welcome, caller. Can hear you. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, good. Yeah. To your point, though. Um, yeah, I think just the um, way that one side of the street might be wearing the mask, the other side may not. And uh, another thing that, you know, in addition to all the things that come along with COVID, uh, that being one of those things that divides us. But how can we come to a compromise to make sure that we are making sure that we're all safe and looking out for each other? So I think that's the biggest thing that I'm looking for. Uh, we're just coming back. Uh, I'm talking about some of the things that are dividing us right now some of the issues that we're we're seeing in the land and uh we're just trying to you know as we come back and, and we should mention by the way that our theme uh this for this episode is uh pushing back pushing back against adversity mm-hmm. um and trying to uh you know find ways to just uh you know survive right now it's 2022 it's yeah. a new year. Uh, we've been through a lot in the last couple of years, and Rejected Stone Productions has been right here through it all. Um, that's what's kind of exciting, and having a chance to you know come back and and discuss you know come back and discuss some of these uh, issues issues that matter, issues that are on the minds of people right now, and yeah, you know just finding ways that we can come together, basically. Yeah. Now you're you're out in the city. You know, I travel there like several several days a week. But uh, what kind of adversity are you all seeing out there um, in the city? Oh, uh, well, uh, you know, I could think of a, a, a few things. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing I'm seeing generally, uh, you know, kind of like a uh, I don't know, like people seem more stressed out. Yeah. Uh, it's just mm. A little bit fast, moving fast, a um, little less people are not really finding the time i think to be you know for politeness and stuff like that mm. uh, there's a lot of attitudes and there's a lot of you know my biggest challenge lately has really just been keeping trying to stay keep my own calm and then also help others to stay calm right you know because uh, the times like this that we're living in people are very quick to you know, yell at one another or just, you know, especially oh, driving. Yeah. Driving has been rough. Uh, I'm finding that, you know, I just really don't even want to go out anymore if I, if I can help it. Yeah, you I can know. imagine the city so it, like bumping the bump all the time. But, you know, are you seeing more people like flipping each other off and <laughs> yes. road each kind of things? It's like, you got to let it, you know, hopefully that doesn't lead to too many like un- unfortunate situations, but I can see people using that as an outlet to get some of that angst off the chest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I have seen that. I have seen that. And I find it, you know, it's it's um it's a confusing time. It's uh I think COVID has just changed so much. Right. Um and we thought that we, you know, we're gonna be post COVID and now we're finding that COVID is a permanent lasting condition that we're all gonna have to just get used to and adapt to on a, in a permanent basis that's that's that, that's a hard realization in 2022 yeah so I, yeah. I think it's i think it's just a matter of trying to find joy in places where where one can you know mm-hmm. where you can um trying to be a little bit more patient a little bit more calmer and yeah. um you know because things are not always what they appear to be uh, moments 
that happen and the, some of the biggest things I've seen happen is just be, misunderstanding, complete misunderstanding. Yeah. So I don't know if you're finding that. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I had a colleague of mine. Um, she realized that people were burning out and she said um, she's able, she's in a capacity where she could actually could send out uh, care packages and the packages we got in the mail was like um, tea, uh, calming patches. Um, I forgot some other things they put in there, but it was almost like a, you know, if you need a moment that that quiet moment for yourself, you know, oh, there's some other kind of calming kind of like crystals that you put into a drink, you know, like a water in like a like a like a crystal light, you know, uh, kind of thing, instant instant drink kind of thing, but you can cool out with it. And it's just entering something into your day to day uh, routine and your day to day hustle that doesn't require you to turn on the TV. Doesn't require mm. you to look at a Zoom. Doesn't require you to pick up the phone. It's just like you in the process of making uh, that tea, or you uh, putting the patch on your on your back and sitting somewhere and just vegging out. And I made sure I, I reached out to her personally and said thank you. And then when we were on a call together, I thanked her again in front of everybody because I think that's the essence. And um, the fact that I work with a number of folks who are doing some amazing things on top of their nine to five that they do with uh with me just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation like hey how you doing you know because recently i just went through some some wild you know with uh my family uh I was having a number of family medical emergencies but to know that i'm not the only one going through it i gotta ask that question how are you doing reaching out say hey how, how? And, and you know what i got so many i got so much more back from just asking that question to yeah. know that I recognize that you you're you're worth it, you're valued, and also recognize that you're human and you probably go through human stuff like I do. And I think the more that I can sit down and relate to folks that way, I think kind of gives people a minute to kind of get away from that normal routine. I'm not sure if you see the same thing happening where you are, but just asking like how often do you sit down and just you know, even with your wife sometimes, you know, and the kids like, hey, how how's it going today? You know. For real. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you, 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 yeah, that, no, that really, um, that really hits me because, uh, you're absolutely right. It's, 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 it's important to take, take the time. Uh, we're trying to do more of that, you know, yeah. relax with the family, talk with them about their day. Yeah. Um, healthy practices, you know, and, and we should mention, mm. I know that, you know, <clears throat> this year's the theme for black history month is going to be black is black health and wellness. Yep. this year that's yep. the national theme from the association for the study of african-american life and history y'all mm -hmm. have heard me mention this organization before i work with work with them we call it asala Respect. and um you know uh, uh by the time this this uh you'll see, people see this uh black history month is is, is you know is, is ongoing is happening now so mm -hmm. uh um we know i know the association is excited about their uh virtual festival it's going to they're doing a the second uh virtual black history month festival yeah, all through the, yeah did you see it? <clears throat> uh uh all through the month of february mm -hmm. uh they're going to be doing this and uh it's all kinds of great events uh folks coming together you know to talk about how uh, we've been affected by you know just the pandemic but not only the pandemic which is a big thing uh, uh considering the disparities in terms of who has died the most who was oh, affected man. uh with covid but this history stretches far back to things like the tuskegee experiment yeah uh other other things where black bodies have been experimented upon Mm. including something i didn't had i had no idea about which was uh one uh, experiment where they did radiation uh nuclear radiation it's on the on on, on a, uh, one on black men i believe it was a group um and they'll be talking about that so uh, uh this is all you know going to be really really eye-opening so we encourage everybody to check that out as well oh man you got you got me intrigued and uh definitely um interest is peaked to uh find out a little bit more about what's happening and um but just to 
And I think this is a fear too. Um, I think uh, another thing that's kind of like splitting folks, this whole aspect of like critical race theory and uh, a certain group of people feeling ashamed and things like that. And I'm like, do you, if you actually look at the facts and the truth and atrocities that have happened, um, uh, one's feelings um, are something that maybe your, your 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 ability to empathize or not to empathize is something that's getting in the way. And all we're trying to do is, and I, I'm glad that Asala is doing this, is actually sharing these things that have happened to folks that, you know, it was unsolicited. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to breathe and exist on this planet just like you are, but, but you feel someone felt that it was okay to experiment and put people through these type of atrocities is like, um, it's, 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 it's a dehumanizing, um, evil kind of, uh, approach. Oh yeah. And yeah. It's, 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 I don't know. Just, yeah, every time I hear about it and see uh, some documentaries on these type of things, it's just like I can hardly get through half of it because it's just it's, 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 it's part of our history, it's part of our, our struggle. But it's like, dang, can, can I just get something uh, happy today? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, well, you know, I, I remember we we did an episode on this. Uh, yeah, maybe a year ago or so. I think, uh, and I, I believe it was either. I think it was. You know, we, where we looked at uh, and talked about people's hesitance. It was about the vaccine. We did yeah. an episode on the yeah. vaccine last year, yeah. Yeah. and a lot of people at that time, a lot of a lot of black folks, especially, were, um, you know, a little skeptical of taking the vaccine. You know, yeah. and and that was so uh, hard to understand at that time. Now we, you know, fast forward, and we and it, we know that there's a broad swath of people out there black and white uh, you know and everything in between who some folks who who are resistant yeah uh, who have been anti you know against the vaccine and we've seen all kinds of things play out but but i think for the most part um people are reaching toward health people are reaching toward uh wellness um you know and then there's and then there's some other brave people who just say hey you know i have an immune system and I, i'm okay you know but um and we, you know, you try to respect all positions, but, but, but yeah, you know, this history is is very, um, it's a very disturbing one. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, they're going to have some people there, like you know, uh, Deidre Cooper Owens, who's the author of a book called Medical Bondage. Uh, she, oh. You know, she, yeah, she, you know, she did a lot of work on the origins of you know, about the gynecological field and how mm. so much of that was. Uh, experimenting on black women, you know, in terms of developing some of the techniques that are even used today. I think that story's been well told, and so yeah, they're going to be yeah. bringing people like her on. Uh, there's also going to be a, a gentleman from the Henrietta Lacks Foundation. Okay, that's going to be involved in talking about the the HeLa cells. Henrietta Lacks HeLa cells. She had the. You may you might have. Uh, seen there was a, a movie about this on hbo that, the hbo uh, special yeah yeah that oprah i think oprah did and mm -hmm. um told that story and so so black bodies we're more than black bodies we're more uh, we're not here only for labor and that kind of thing we, we we are more than black bodies and that's the name of the event this year black bodies parts one and two uh, gentlemen from the henrietta Lacks foundation okay that's going to be involved in talking about the the hit Hela cells, Henrietta Lacks Hela cells. She had the, you may, you might have uh, seen. There was a, a movie about this on HBO. That, the HBO uh, special, yeah, yeah. That Oprah, I think Oprah did, and mm -hmm. um, told that story. And so, so black bodies. The, we're, we're more than black bodies. We're more body. You know, right. we're here to experiment. To the bomb. Uh, we're not here only for labor and that kind of thing. We 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 are more than black bodies, and that's the name of the event this year black bodies parts one and two yeah so it's gonna be pretty interesting i think hey um i just got um uh, had, had a great conversation with uh hopefully a future colleague uh uh and actually was produced by jay-z and, and will smith so once again you have um some of these big time folks who are considered like 
kajillionaires and billionaires um, and also intersected, intersected with being uh, black or African-American really owning the narrative on how the story should be told, you know, and um, to know that the sacrifices that Emmett Till and she had to make, you know, for order for order for people to be free is that sacrifice coming back to make sure that the story is told in the same way that maybe at a time that she couldn't tell. But now that we have all this, you know, access to um, uh, social media, uh, access to networks. Now we have people like Jay-Z and Will Smith in these positions that they can uh, kind of like dictate how things are going to go, you know, yeah, and, and, in a more collaborative way. I can't imagine and the fact that it's recorded. You can watch this over and over again and actually get some really insight about, well, what was really going on during that time? Um, when Emmett Till was alive and, and imagine if that was me and then start to look at aspects of adversity it's like wait a minute didn't Trayvon Martin go to something like that yeah didn't Ahmaud Arbery go to something like that didn't right. and it's like wow you know these pictures being painted or these these narratives being uh, illuminated in a way that um, you can't hide it as much as you want to go against like something like CRT or teaching uh, you know to use uh, Trump uh, alternative facts <laughs> <laughs> Right, you know, right. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, that's that's more tongue in cheek, right there. But <laughs> the truth is going to surface. The light's going to come out. As much as you try to su- uh, suppress this, the truth is coming out. And I think I really applaud uh, uh, Asala for for uh, providing these type of um, uh, opportunities to 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 learn and to understand our history. Is something that is hard to embrace. It's hard to understand, but it's there. It happened. You know, so. Everybody should check that out. The uh, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a women in the movement, I believe it's called. It's yeah, yeah. And um, I think what we also need to look at is like the unsung stories of uh, women in movements. Um, I was actually uh, blessed to be on the um, the Schomburg had a comic book festival. I think that tenth annual Black Comic Book Festival, okay. and one of the sisters that was on there, Rebecca Hall, uh, wrote a graphic novel called Wake. Um, the hidden history of women led slave revolts. And, wow! And, and you know, and like I said, I'm a big history buff like yourself, and just always wanted to know about certain things that happened. But to make a graphic novel hardcover, you know, um, that really talks about these things um, in, a, in, in a in a way that you know just doesn't have words on 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 paper, but but to understand how to detail the emotions and the uh, lived experiences of folk during that particular time um, and to have women at the center of this, this story really uh, brings that visibility but brings that value to mm. understanding that it wasn't just men out there fighting it was it was men and women but and sometimes it was only women fighting you know so yeah um, but yeah, yeah man it, it, that's, ex- <laughs> that's exciting that's exciting you know yeah. because because of you know you had mentioned your position with the, at, you know your job and and the institution you're with now at SBA and um, it seems like it's just bringing you into a lot of new circles from what I can oh, tell yeah. and a lot of new spheres man and and that will be important because the network that you bring together you know that any that I bring together but, but the ones that any one of us any one of us bring together is uh, you know you just never know what can come out of it you never yeah. know what what connections or what um, you know what I mean. It's just so many different possibilities that yeah. come out of these these things. So it's great that you're out there. We'll, we'll be looking for you. We'll be tagging you. Right. Um, and where can people where can people follow you? Uh, on, like social media and stuff. I guess I saw you on Instagram. What's your Instagram? Name? Yeah. So my Instagram is doc underscore. Is it? Yeah, Doc underscore Watson seventeen. I had to make sure I haven't like you know you don't look at your own handle sometimes, but yeah, Doc <laughs> underscore okay. Watson seventeen, and uh, you, you you can't miss me as far as a picture right there. But um, right there, yeah. The other thing is um, to your point because we talk about adversity and 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 chronicling certain things and identifying um unsung heroes in in the movement, so to speak. I know you just wrote a. Are you in a, how's your book deal going? What's happening with that? If we could oh, talk about that, because I think yeah. people need to know. 
Wow. So, yeah, I yeah. got I to gotta throw that back at you, man. You looking at me. I'm watching you, too, because I saw that thing <laughs> up on Facebook. I was like, oh, OK. I know. Oh, like I said, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, see, listeners, I have to, I, I'm privy to kind of know a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. But to actually see the book cover on Facebook, I said, all right, it's something we're going to talk about a little later. So. <laughs> I don't know what the bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> see, he's not. He's not just a professor or a, a host on a co-host on uh, Projector Stone. <laughs> he's also a, a DJ, sound <laughs> provider, sound engineer. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, man. You know, uh, you were asking about my book, and thank you. Yeah, I, I had recently um, just shared it out on Facebook. And I just shared the cover, actually, and um, it had a, it got a real big reaction. It got a real big reaction, and nothing can make author you know happier than than getting yeah. a, a strong reaction like that. And so the book is called Before Busing, and that's kind of the point, you know, uh, before busing in Boston. Mm. For people who may not know, busing was school into de- desegregation. Right, uh, buses were used to uh bring kids from you know the black part of boston to the to south boston and vice mm-hmm. versa and um you know i kind of had the idea of doing before busing because it seems to me in boston the whole story about african americans and kind of got distorted around mm. that whole issue of segregation and it caused such a rift in the city itself and it's caused a uh something that that uh, bostonians have really still been grappling with and trying to really heal from to be honest right so i you know decided to just focus on the time before bus to get a better context for what ends up happening and, and maybe to understand why and 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 what i found was that um boston presents a real paradox because on the one hand it's a place that people think of as being liberal and open mm-hmm with right. regard to race relations is something that black folks felt that way, felt that way about the city uh, for a long time because of the abolitionist movement there gotcha but in the but in the more recent 20th century there's a lot of changes that happen in the city itself that that create this tension between black and mostly irish catholic uh irish americans who uh, i talk about in the book is really having been kind of misled around the race pro- American race project into identifying with whiteness mm-hmm. and that caused that's really caused of all the problems so <laughs> yeah um, like I said we gotta talk about it and document it and uh, yeah I'm proud of you um getting to this point where you know it's gonna be out there circulating so uh like I said we'd love to have you at one point come and and, and do some discussions on that as well because um I think uh Thank we're you. at a point right now where we're having some of these difficult conversations but um stuff based and rooted in research you know so uh definitely yeah. you know anytime i can uh get you to uh speak about it or come and share some of this knowledge uh yeah i'll do that and uh, that's how we got to look out for each other do adversity you know that's you know, great yeah you know, that's it's popular. Right. yeah 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 man so um yeah, so for all you young authors out there, um, it's possible, it's doable. Um, and uh, once again, this is an opportunity for you to share and uh, own your narrative, so to speak. You know, um, it's something that made me think about like your title also about adversity, like during slavery times, uh, because there's this notion that, you know, it's almost like a negative connotation with African Americans and you know being educated or being intelligent and there's always this question of like how intelligent are you and it's like do you, do you know where we come from you know like this, yeah. this continent called africa that had all types of inventors and uh, uh leaders kings uh, of of many folks and, and how it influenced not just the continent but places like greece um places like italy and things like that so it's um and I'm thinking like the, the way that you phrased the um, the title before busing helps people understand like there's something that was going on before. Even, even when people talk about segregation, they always really talk about the the half and half nots. But there was something special going on, I think, in some of these uh, these schools uh, where, it, where it was predominantly black, where there was another sense of, of, of purpose and uh, another sense of like uh, 
rising above the current situation. So does your book kind of talk about that a little bit in in some aspects? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it does. It talks about a lot of stuff. I mean, I had to go way back um, with the history. I had to really start it, the book, in, um, you know, at the beginning of the first arrival of African Americans to Boston, you know, via slave ships. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the opening of the book. Wow. 1638. Mm. Um, and, uh, Boston's founded in 1630. By 1638, you have the arrival of the first slave oh, ship. Oh, shoot. Okay. Named called Desire was the name of the ship, <laughs> ironically. Uh, uh, interpret that as, as you will, but 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 it's... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I had to chronicle it back to that point because I think, first of all, people forget that Boston and Massachusetts ever even had slavery, never mind. Yeah. Some, some of the details of it, so just, just that part of the book is really drawing from a lot of other uh, researchers who look at the colonial period and look at the uh, at the early early America because that's not right. really my specialty, but uh, I just kind of synthesized some of that work and 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 brought it together to 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 make to 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 create the context yeah, just... to, to show the context for uh, for what the, what's going to become a a demand in Boston and it, it basically like Boston, just like America, you know, has its ideals and has its kind of lofty principles. Boston uh, was called by its, some of its founders, you know, a city upon a hill. Hmm. And so it was supposed to, sh- from the Bible to shine like a city upon a hill. Um, and that means being inclusive of all members of the city, not just some people. Not just a Boston for some, not just a city upon a hill for some, uh, but but for all members of the city. Um, and uh, Massachusetts simultaneously kind of claims it's it has a lot of pride in having, you know, created rights for African Americans early on, including the vote for black men. Mm-hmm. You know, before the Fifteenth Amendment, uh, it prides itself on having ended slavery somewhat earlier than the rest of the country. But I, I, I'm, Amistad is connected to Massachusetts. I yeah. That ship, the Amistad, um, it, it wandered its way into Long Island Sound and then it, it was and then it was it was captured there and brought back to New Haven, I believe it was. Okay. And and, and but but you I got people, that. Yeah. you got you know you you know, in New England at that time, um, or Boston, Massachusetts, I'm sure was somehow involved. You know, I mentioned it. I'm starting the book. I meant to have to I have to mention all that stuff. Uh, because, yeah. yeah, because um, uh, just because, you know, these, this is the abolitionist kind of tradition that, that was very, very important in Boston. But anyway, so, but uh, I, I have always felt that. Any contemporary problem that we may be having is made a little clearer from some historical context. That's all. Mm-hmm. So basically, my book is just providing context gotcha. for this big moment that, that caught the country by surprise. When school desegregation and busing started, people were unprepared for the level of violence that accompanied them, throwing things at the buses. And, uh, you know, if you've ever watched the movie The Departed. They mm-hmm. show some of that footage of, of yeah. black kids coming into South Boston and you can right. throwing the rocks at them and all that stuff. And so, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's an important topic, and it's it's more more than anything, it's a moment of a reckoning around race in Boston happening right now. Yeah, and and uh, uh, you know, if you believe in how justice works, uh, you know arc of the moral universe is long but it bends toward justice and mm, and okay. so actually the name of the preface of the book is called the arc of the moral universe in boston so i'm i'm, I'm talking we're talking about why did king come to martin Luther King visit boston in the first place mm. why did uh why you know boston has colleges and universities so that always brings a lot of different interesting people into the city from all around the country exactly uh, some of the smartest 
and the first few black students who came to Harvard end up just staying in Boston uh, and contributing mightily to the movement there. So it's been a long journey. Boston, yeah. is, you ask most black folks about Boston, they're like, not today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> not going. Uh, it ain't yeah. happening. So uh, it's had a rough reputation among among the black community. Um, and I talk about that as well. I talk about that. Uh, uh, Cornell yeah. West talks about, it's, it's talked about, I quote Cornell West in the book, and he's talked about how Boston has never been seen as a black city in the way that like Washington, D.C. or New York or right. Detroit or Chicago has, you know. It's, yeah. it's, it's partly due to a somewhat smaller black population there. Um, but we have had an impact in other places. New Edition. New I, was, I was just about to bring them up. Um, Listen. You know, <laughs> but you know what? When New Edition came out to to when people were like trying to figure out what are they from uh New York? Are they from Jersey? They're from uh Ohio, you know, or they, like you think about all these chocolate cities, uh, you know, not Ohio, but there's certain places like in, in Ohio that you can uh, kind of identify as having like a large African American uh, population. But uh DC right. and they've come to find out. They're from Boston. This is like back when they first came out in the 80s. I was like, Boston? Only thing I really uh, associated Boston with was uh, Larry Bird. You know, yeah, man. See, that's the Boston, that's the Boston in you coming out. You know, I <laughs> said the right two words. But uh, yeah, nah, man. It's but all nah. love and respect, respect and love. But the, some beautiful music. It's yeah. Beautiful. And shout out to people who made that music in Boston. Yeah. Maurice Starr, Maurice Starr, super producer. Who found new edition and then later put new kids on the block together who i also like <laughs> hey uh that that's when um mark Wahlberg got exposed he got his first oh, exposure through mark, yeah. mark Wahlberg though he he he, he actually he I, <laughs> he he deserves a little more respect as an mc than he ever got in my humble opinion um, but he has one song where he actually talks about race in boston Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Um, uh, it was called the. It's called Wild Side. And uh, one day I'm gonna write something about this because he talks about the. Um, it was uh, the Stewart, uh, Charles Stewart case. Eighties. It was basically like a guy who uh, Charles Stewart. He. Uh, he basically. It's a terrible story. His wife was pregnant. Uh, and I guess for insurance, he arranged for her demise. You know, nobody knew that at the time. And he told the police that, you know, a black person had killed his wife. And there was like a manhunt in the city. This is the 1986, I believe. Mm. 1986. And um, yeah, Mark Wahlberg made a song about it, like talked about it. But anyway, you know, there's not too much examples of race to be discussed, except, you know, so I'm always on the lookout for those kinds of things, but uh, yeah, man, shout out to yeah, shout out to Mark Wahlberg for, who, for bringing those, that up. Yeah, those who did it. Yeah, yeah. man. But anyway, but yeah, I, I think um, as we as we talk about the individual perspective of um, bringing things to light, I think it's also important that you know we let people know who are going through this stuff out there in the world that um, you're not alone and um, mm. that uh, I definitely find that the more that we sit down and talk about these things or, sh- or bring these things up or even um, when you when you are at work spend like five or ten minutes just to kind of say what's going on with you, how's your day going kind of stuff because you never know what the struggle is and sometimes, you know, when you interact with folks, they might be a little edgy or a little, uh, like you said, you know, got a little, little vinegar in them walking. You know, people just kind of don't even acknowledge that you're there. It, it may be because they're just trying to figure stuff out while they're going from point A to point B. Or they might just be sitting there because they try to get to point B, but they're like right in the middle, you know, just sitting yeah. and, and trying to figure it out. And um, we just want to let people know that, you know, it's good to reach out and let someone know that you are thinking about them and to know that you could open up a door for um, insight and um, and dialogue and, and just, just chewing the fat, you know, but, but if we don't make that space 
for that. We'll just keep on doing our routines and it just just doesn't doesn't make sense. I mean, look how busy we were. <laughs> but we make sure we found the time to make sure we got this thing back up and running. <laughs> and um and we want to make sure people, you know, understand like, hey, we know that you've been down, we know you've been out, you've been, yeah. been struggling, but um there's something about resiliency uh and like within the umbrella of resiliency is learning how to just get up and take one step. And if there's one step you took that you didn't take before, that's you, it's moving you closer to where you're trying to get to. So we just want to make sure people know that, you know, let them know that we're out there um, paying attention and anything that we can provide through our services to give you more support. Uh, please let us know. You know, um, I'm not sure how you're going to, they're going to reach out to us. Eventually we'll have a way for you to contact us, but we want to be able to create more programming to help you know that, we're paying attention to what's happening, but we also want to make sure we provide solutions. Um, if not just a space for you to kind of talk about these things and maybe something come out of it, you know? So just want to make sure I said that. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think yeah. that at this point in the year, you know, people are tired, you know, people are going through a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, the winter and, uh, and it, you know, it, it's true. I think it's a rebuilding. And I think that's why, we call this episode pushing back against adversity not mm-hmm. letting not letting things you know stop us from what we have to do right we had so many technical did we not have a few technical we had a lot of technical possibilities uh here but we decided you know just to push through uh, and keep it going i've been under the weather you know i mean it's it's all kinds of yeah been going on. yeah man my, my folks been uh getting hit with covid and uh or covid like symptoms and yeah yeah and i know that can put a damper on your your day-to-day operations <laughs> so to speak but um i think Same that the, the, the mental piece that comes along with you know realizing like how people have been affected by covid and probably the the mild and the more severe ways you know i'm just glad to know that for those who are out there who were covid survivors that you're still still with us and you're still pushing through and you're still thriving. Those continue to survive and those who have lost uh, family members to COVID I uh, just want to give you a shout out as well. I'll let you know that we, our hearts and minds and condolences and, and well wishes are with you and uh, to let you know that you know, just take advantage of the time that you have and be grateful for who's around you and uh, for those who have passed on, what have they taught you uh, in regards to you know, getting through this thing called life, you know, just want to be able to mm. recognize and pay homage to those folks out there, but also inspire those who are still here uh, to, uh, you know, take the time to 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 sit and reflect and um, and restore. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, man. You couldn't have said it better. Yeah. And um, I also want to add that too. And I, my mind is on people a lot lately. You know. Yeah. Just, just, just hoping that you and yours are doing okay, and that you're surviving in this time and thriving, uh, even uh, as we go forward. And just, you know, we have to remove some strongholds uh, that we've had that we had in 2020, 2021, and as we mm-hmm. come into 2022, just remove removing some of those strongholds, moving through, moving over, uh, doing whatever you have to do to get to get through, over to the side, under whatever it takes um, because you have an important vision. You have, a, you have an important contribution to make and you're just about to step into a new season. You know, I think that's the case for all of us. So we uh, invite you to continue on this journey with us this year. Yeah. Um, who knows what it'll bring. It'll bring some, we got, we got new sound effects. We got some new stuff and we're going to have some um, new guests, uh, this year and we'll also be able to when we're live uh, have you be able to call in so we'll share that number with you next time oh yeah definitely just keep yeah brother thank you for once again um, pushing to make sure we provide the space today and pushing through some adversity today but also uh, while we were in hiatus so to speak you know that's like the meantime we're still like tinkering and bringing some more uh, new flavor to uh, Rejected Stone Productions and this is like really great to have some of these extra um, amenities and uh, the bells and whistles that will kind of like just put a little, little more of an accent on some of the things we talk about and some of the things we do, you know, so uh, 
appreciate you. Cool, man. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. Yeah. I think it's I think it's gonna work out just fine. So uh this is this is good. This has been really good. I think it's a great um, great start to the season and uh I'm just again looking forward to man, anytime I get a chance to talk to you, my brother, whether yeah. it's over this or on the phone or anything, man, it's always a joy and it always lifts my spirits. Yeah, it, man, same it, here. It really yeah. lifts my spirits and um and uh so so thank you, my brother, for making the time. I know you're a lot busier now. We were glad to catch you. You got the new, oh. the new, new gig, and we see, like I said, seeing you everywhere. Uh, you can find. Uh, uh, I think you mentioned your Instagram, uh, and and I'm on. You can find me on social media, uh, Doctor Zebulon Maletsky at basically just my name at Zebulon Maletsky. Z e b u l o n m i l e t s k y. It's the same for Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, reach out to us and check out the Rejected Stone Productions Facebook page. Yes. Um, that yeah, is, sure. yeah, let them know where that is because that's something we need to definitely pump it up. Yeah, uh, real simple. Rejected Stone Productions on Facebook. Just type that in the search um, and it should pop right up. Um, and then you'll see uh, some of our recorded uh, sessions and um, some of our great guests, some some common guests out of there and Actually, I can tell you that a lot of them are actually doing really well right now. Um, so it's really good. Really to, but um, yeah, like I said, I think, again, Doc underscore Watson 17 at uh, on Instagram and Rejected Stone Productions um, on Facebook. Uh, everything's the same. But um, <clears throat> just want to let you know, this is a place where we have real talk about real things in real time. And yeah. Um, we just want to make sure that we continue to be authentic and steadfast with our mission and our vision and uh, plenty of space for you all to be a part of this. So come on and join us. Yeah. And actually, thank you. And actually share, share this, uh, share this podcast, share this mm-hmm. with somebody. We had a great, um, some great download numbers from last year. We want to hopefully double those this year. So we're, we're on quite as it's kept. We're on Pandora. We're on, um, uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, and yeah. we're also on uh, all basically all the major um, systems that are out there. We're on we're on all of that stuff. So if you want to uh, come check us out, all the streaming systems basically we're on. Um, yeah, man. So, so we out here. <laughs> we out here. So so my brother, uh, thank yes. you. I I I, I I I end where we began with greetings of peace. Mm and gratefulness and gratitude and thankfulness just for uh for having a chance to dialogue with you so uh until next time we'll bid you a good evening <laughs> yeah and a great year and a great year yeah, okay. yeah. rsp out